needs, he needs people that he can learn from. I always say, there's great trainers, but there's no great teachers. So he's got, a, he's got great trainers, but he doesn't have no great teachers. What about emotionally? Emotionally? Yeah, I mean, to come back, he's, that was a bad loss. I mean, at the end, he was just, he didn't know what was Let me tell you. It is. It was a bad loss, and he's got a he's got a long, he's got he's got a heavy task ahead of him. He's making the right moves. Uh, he knows that he needs to do uh, certain stuff like that. He, he knows that he needs to uh, learn a lot of stuff, but these are the stuff that he's he should have been learning. Do you think he should have done an immediate rematch, or do you think he should? No, I don't think he should have did an immediate rematch. I think he's still young enough. Um, you know, especially how he lost. I think uh, his promoter should have really brought that fight back to England, where his where his family is, where his crowd is, and build him back up on that way. Now he's basically brought him back to another foreign country where he doesn't know anybody, and he's going to be looking around like this. Lennox, you mentioned location, and it's a big thing in this fight. You, yeah. you fought in South Africa, which is obviously a location you were not familiar with. Right. What do you make of this fight being in Saudi Arabia and uh, the circumstances around that? I think, uh, you know, obviously Saudi Arabia wants big shows, big events, and, you know, great place for big events at the right time. And I don't think, you know, an event should be an event just because it's money. I think it should be better for your fighter, whatever you, you know, what's the best place for your fighter to fight so he, you can guarantee the win. When it's against a, a lesser opponent, maybe you can bring it over there and say, okay, you know, yeah, I'll box this lesser opponent over there and beat him and, and not have uh, too much weight on my shoulders. Now so, he's, he's got a lot of weight on his shoulders, and he's got a lot to prove, a lot of pressure on him. A lot of pressure. So you think Eddie Hearn probably introduced an un unnecessary variable just from the sense of Saudi Arabia? Well, you see, they, 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 they box for different terms. You know, Eddie Hearns is there for the money. He's trying to get the money. You know, I'm not saying he's wrong. He's a promoter. Promoters are trying to get the most money as possible. But, you know, the promoter and the boxer is supposed to work hand in hand. And, you know, and there's a couple promoters and boxers that work hand in hand. Did, did his team do him a disservice by bringing him up and only fighting in Britain and then suddenly he's in New York? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, uh, they give me heck for this all the time. I said, listen, as a world champion, you need to box around the world. I look at myself. I boxed. I boxed in America because that's where all the belts were. So I was close to the belts, boxing in the mirror, box, uh, bo boxing shows in, in America. I went into places where they booed me when I was going in, but they cheered me when I was coming out. So I went through that aspect of it. That, that toughened me up mentally. You know, I said to Anthony Joshua, you need to box outside of England. When he boxed outside of England, all of a sudden, you know, this is the fight. He's come over here, he's trained in Miami. This is not, Miami's not New York City. You know, I would be training in New York City. And then all of a sudden, you know, you lose. Do you and think he's... And, and, and part of the reason is, he said that's the first time he heard, he was looking around, he, he, people were booing him. You know, when you have 70,000 people cheering for you, and then all of a sudden you go to a place where people are booing you, it's gotta be offset. What, what kind of... Don't you have a suspect chin now? You always gotta have a suspect chin. Yeah. Yeah. He has a suspect chin. Well, um, yeah. I mean, you know, let me tell you, in boxing, there's a couple things that you're gonna go through. You're gonna go through people saying he has no endurance. Okay. Then you, then you show people you have endurance. He doesn't have a good chin. He's gotta get hit. I got hit. People know that I got a good chin. At first, they were saying I didn't have a good chin. Then they said I had a soft spot, but they seen me get hit on that chin again. You know what I mean? So it's like I built up myself and made myself stronger. Do you think he's also has a tough task in filling your shoes as a fellow Brit? I think he shouldn't try and fill my shoes. I think he should try and fill his own shoes. Yeah, I think that's part of the problem as well. Why? Listen, I've done my, I've done my shit. You know, I've. I've upset my goals. Now, 
I've put them there for others to achieve and try and surpass. You meet some people when this fight. I think if Joshua doesn't come in mentally and physically prepared, he will lose the fight. Have you Did talked you to him since the Ruiz fight? No. No. Do you, uh, how would you classify your relationship as like is he, is he like are you men, are you mentoring him in any way throughout the years? Well, you know, he the first time he's he actually came to Hey buddy. How are you, Paul? Good, good. Good to see you, my brother. Hey man, your hair looks good. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see yours. Yeah, looks good. So you, you mentioned before, you can't take your third grade teacher to college. Oh, to college. Right, right. 